Afternoon, folks. Okay, my name's Amir, and I'm going to talk to you about one of the projects I'm working on related to Unikernel, the Unikernel.org. And I'm wearing my Unikernel systems hat today. I work on a number of open source stuff, but as some of you may have noticed from the news yesterday, that's now also part of Docker. So briefly about myself, I worked mostly with Mirage OS, and what I tend to do there is herd cat, so I make sure that um, the community side of things works well, that we're having regular chats about the kind of things we're working on. I've also started looking at what's going on in the wider Unikernel community as well, and just a bit about my background, I used to be a physicist, then I was a neuroscientist for a while, I've been in the Cambridge Computer Laboratory for four years, um, experience from startups and big companies as well. And this year, I hope, is going to be the year of unikernels. Of course. Big statements, clearly. If we look at what's happened over the last year, though, we've had a lot more people writing about what's going on with unikernels. Some of these are now interesting to read in hindsight, given uh, uh, yesterday's news. But lots more people are interested in this technology, what it could mean for them, and generally what's happening in this space. And as part of this, we've also had new implementations being released. So Runtime JS and Include OS also came out uh, towards the end of last year. And this is really, really exciting. There are now at least 10 or so projects that I know of, uh, implementations, all trying to take this approach of building these systems, thinking from the ground up, taking either thinking from the ground up or taking existing pieces of software and breaking them up and making them more usable as libraries. And these are, we've heard from a number of these today as well. So Adam from HalVM and uh, Richard from uh, Mirage OS, and a number, of, there a number of these are also out there. Some of them weren't able to make it today because I actually asked if they were able to come and talk. So it's great that there's so much activity, so many people trying out these ideas and coming up with their own ways of moving forward with this. And this is awesome. This is fantastic. So it's great to see other people trying to do this. So um, I know there have been conversations between some of the projects about uh, issues with TCP and what have they learned while they've been building their version of the networking stack. So there's lots of choice out there. And there's, that means there's lots of opportunity for both the people building these things and imp implementing them, but also from learning up, um, from each other while, while building. And there's an example of cross-project pollination. So because we're all working in the same, same kind of area, generally some people are trying things out, and it's worth learning from each other what's learning from each other the best way to do things, especially when those things are common. For example, Mirage OS has some deploy scripts for EC2. They were kind of bashed together. And someone from one of the other projects came along, took a look at these, and had a go at making a launch script for Rump Run. And they discussed that on the Rump Run mailing list. So they took the script from Mirage OS, refined it, made it much better. And then that also got imported into Rump Run. So it became a part of the Rump Run front project, and that shows an example of how something that started off in one project helped benefit a different project and ended up being better for everyone. There's also other work going on for, um, where uh, uh, Mirage OS in this example is trying to um, run on bare metal and using piece components from Rump Kernel and make great progress is being made. And this is a, a case of two different projects coming together to try and achieve something. So from our point of view, this is fantastic because we're all working on these different things. We can all talk to each other and figure out what's going on and then combine things as and when we need them. But there's a downside to this. So with great choice comes great discombobulation. People get confused when someone out there says, what's, what's this unikernel thing? What does it mean for me? Where do I go find out some information? What is it? And then they go and find out there are about 10 projects. They're all having their own way of doing things. They, there are maybe 10 different ways of building stuff, 10 different environments that you might need. And so it gets a bit complicated. And so then you end up having discussions like this on the internet. Essentially, someone saying, well, you just need one of them to win, don't you? And I can do this because I know Gareth. I know Gareth fairly well, fairly well. We talk a lot. And essentially, his point is, it would just be easier for this whole movement to do much better if there was just, you know, just one of them. If one of them wins out, wouldn't that be better? Is that a question? I'm, well, I'm uh -huh. Oh, I see what you mean. I see, yes. 
So Gareth was interested, it was the, the point of this tweet essentially it would be easier for the whole thing to get forward if there was one that was clearly ahead of the others. But all of those projects are making different trade-offs. Uh, for example, we've heard from Mirage OS today, which is taking a clean slate approach to everything. All the libraries are being built from the ground up. That's the principle. There's a lot to be done. There's a lot to learn from that and a lot of benefits to that. And of course, there are a lot of trade-offs to that. Rump kernel um, takes a different approach, which is looking at all the solid components that exist in NetBSD and making them available as libraries. There are trade-offs there as well. And you, as someone writing applications, should be able to choose amongst, uh, with your own trade-offs which pieces are going to be most useful to you. So having these uh, multiple projects out there is really important. It's important to nurture them. And because a bunch of the projects are actually language specific, it would be really sad if this became a proxy language war. That does, that's not really going to benefit anyone. We've been there before. So what do we do about it? We all want to have all our own projects. We all want to work on stuff that we're working on because we have certain needs, we have certain uh, goals that we're trying to work towards. But Unicorns are a thing, people are asking about them, that people want more information about them. We, want, we all want to get more users on board. We all want to get uh, users on board and more developers, more contributions on board. So we have to do something about this that helps balance both. So this is the approach, we ta uh, one approach to taking that. So unicorn.org is a community website. So it's going to be, it, it is, exists, and it's meant to help all the projects achieve more users, more growth, more contributions, and actually help solve some of the common problems. Devel.unikernel.org is a place where there's a forum which works very well with email, before anyone asks me about that, and where you can actually uh, grow your um, uh, project's communications. So it's community driven, which means essentially we get to decide wh what direction it's going to go in, and it's just getting started. The aim is it's going to be a single entry point, so when people want to find out what unikernels are, what, what's the point, what are the benefits, what are the trade-offs, this is a place we can start pointing them. And it will start to um, increase in value in terms of helping people understand what's going on in this ecosystem as well. It will provide a window to what's going on to, with the other projects. It should also ease the process of bringing everyone in, as I've just mentioned, across all of the open source projects. And importantly, it's not just um, a community-facing website. This is also, should also help us start, start solving common problems around configuration, deployment, and monitoring. All the things that we are all going to have to solve if we want to have deployments of our unicornal projects. So this is what it looks like. The first thing you'll notice is that I am not a designer. So this is a fairly simple site. There's information on there now. That there is, it will go through a redesign, so I'll just quickly show you the site. Let's go here. And if I can find my mouse there. Great, I'm on the wrong side. So I'll just show you what the site looks like. Uh, this is not going well. Let's try that. So it's fairly basic because it's mo mostly about the content. And so we had just have some information so that people can get a quick overview of what's going on. All the projects are listed here. So if you're interested in following any of the projects you've seen today, you can just go to unikernel.org slash projects. They're all linked from here. And so if you know of one that has, does not happen to be here, please do send a pull request. There is resources because many, many of the projects also write papers. So this is one about the Rump Kernel project. Here's one that talks mostly about Mirage OS. So this is also a, a place to highlight the, the work that's going on. And we also help highlight the individual projects as well. So yes, that was yesterday's news. But Include OS being released also wrote a post for this site, which um, was shared with a lot of people because or, um, Include OS was newly released um, and volunteered a post for the site, which was great. So it's a, it's a sign that this is working. And this is the forum where essentially we can uh, comment on blog posts and share information. So it's possible to set up um, categories on this site where essentially Include OS is going to be um, is just thinking about doing this where a category will just be there effectively like a mailing list for them, but it's easy for them to then engage with something across a different project just by looking somewhere else or tagging someone in a certain question. So it's, it's a little bit like mailing lists and GitHub issues if, if you're familiar with both of those. Let's 
go back to the slides. <coughs> Let's shrink this. Okay, right. If you have questions, please do shout out. So that's essentially the, web the website itself, and this is the the develop part of the um, web forum. And so what happens next? We are getting better design for this site. And there's some kind of, we will have some form of branding for it as well. So I've noticed that people like, when, they, when journalists like to write articles about this, they would like to have a graphic. So we'll come up with a logo. And I would like all the people who are working on Unicode implementations to discuss what needs they have. So essentially get involved in the forum and say what, what it there is that they're working on, what things will be useful for them, and we'll see what we can do to help. There's also um, discussions that we've had, on, I know that's taken place on the Mirage list and perhaps others, about joint unikernel events. Uh, for example, the idea of a, a unikernel install party has happened. So this is where people from one project want to, want to find out what it's like, essentially just get started with tools from another project. So a bunch of the Mirage OS people want to try out HalVM, so sit in a room together and actually get started, or people from different projects gathering together to, sh to essentially help each other get started with the projects. And we can also start working towards shared infrastructure. So Unicorn.org doesn't have to be just a website. It can also be a bunch of stuff behind the scenes as well, essentially serving things for people. So for example, we could set up some kind of uh, continuous integration system that helps deal with all the packages, that helps deal with all packages from all the different projects. And this is a discussion we can have with, with everyone to see if how useful this would be and what, what shape that should take. And essentially, it should grow as the community grows. If more Unicode implementations arrive, we can work with them to figure out what their needs are, incorporate them into this, e into this ecosystem. The idea here is generally all the projects should do well, and then the whole movement will do well. So here's what I need from all the people working on Unicode, is essentially, we need you. Is start get, is get involved with the website. Sign up to the forum, um, raise your questions, and if you have information or content that you think should be on the site that is not there, either send pull requests or um, comment uh, or send me a note and we'll start working on it. And so back to this tweet that I pointed out earlier, essentially this idea that there should only be one Unicode project that should, succe should succeed. And essentially it's this site. So if this site works, then essentially all the projects will raise the tide for all the projects and this movement has a chance to actually start um, becoming mainstream and helping people write software for software in a different way. Okay. Any questions? Go ahead. Standards, I think, I'm talking from a personal viewpoint, is uh, occur from two ways. You either start doing stuff and see what works across projects, try things, so iterate your way towards something, or if there are too many multiple things already out there, then you essentially have to get everyone in a room and sit together and talk lots and try and figure it out. What I'm hoping is that since we're all still relatively early, if we can all work together and actually iterate our way to something that's common for everyone, that's going to be a way to achieve something that is like standards without having to have lots and lots of long meetings. We actually produce things that work for each of us. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing we should work towards through the, through the forum. Through the forum and meeting each other. Go ahead. Excellent question. At the moment, it's people who are working on those projects. So if someone wants to submit a pull request to the site, then essentially it'll just be looked at and merged. If, if someone has a suggestion for some infrastructure they need, then essentially we'll figure out how to make that work. So there is. So in terms of governance, right now, I'm a, a few of us made the site. We uh, came from Unikernel Systems, and now that's part of Docker. So Docker will support this site going forward, but it is still a community-driven site. What does control?
control me. They'll have, they'll have some influence because um, Docker tooling is something that will be useful. So Mirage OS and the Mirage and Rump Run, the demo that we did was useful. So that's something that the, those two, well, the people who are working on those projects will be interested in. But in terms of uh, control and telling the commu this community what's going to happen, that's depends on what happens with people who are working on the Unicode yeah. implementations right now. So if, if the community gets involved with this, then, then it's the community that's driving this. I hope that happens. Go ahead. <laughs> Excellent question. Not yet. That you'll notice uh, an issue on the GitHub issue tracker. So this is all on GitHub, so this is all um, available to look at. And yes, we want to run it on a Unicode, but not just one of them. I want to be able to run it on all of them. So essentially, I would like to be able to load balance across all the different Unikernel implementations. So I know how to turn this into a Mirage OS Unikernel, for example, because I've, I've done that before. But I would also like to be able to run this as a Rump Run Unikernel using Nginx, and perhaps also as a HalVM Unikernel, and essentially have something that load balances across all of them. So when someone visits a site, it serves them one of them. So that would be really cool to get going. But at the moment, no, it, this is uh, not a Unikernel. So if you want to help me get to this, get this to a unicorn, that would be great. Of course. <laughs> Any more? Yes, um, I've talked to about half of them now, and they're happy with it. So Include OS, for example, contributed a blog post to this website which is fantastic. Mirage OS is, obviously is keen on this. Um, contributors to the Rump Run uh, Unikernel project are also keen on this. So this, there are people who are happy with this. And the forum that I set up, for example, I, I didn't set that up without checking with those people first that they would actually be interested in using it. So yes, people are involved in, in this. I'm pointing at the tweet. I should also point at this. So I'm also interested in getting feedback from people on this talk and also the things I've said. So if you go to that URL, you'll see a little form. You can leave me comments there. Any more questions? So how many of you have come across this website before? Wonderful. How many of you are now going to go visit this website and sign up for the forum? Excellent. If there are no further questions, I'm 10 minutes early. <laughs>